Welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Kristen Smith, Pennsylvania editor for the Center Square. Joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania reporter, Anthony Hennon. So Anthony, this week, we're going to talk about the internet and how in the year of 2023, up to half of Pennsylvanians don't have access to it. Problem has been for years that the building the necessary infrastructure has just been too expensive. And even if companies did invest in these regions that don't have it, a lot of the residents may struggle to afford it or simply don't even know how to get online. That's changed a little bit because, well, a lot of it, because the federal government is investing a massive amount of money into this issue. And so... Beyond the investment part that now seems to be solved, we have more of a logistics problem. And how are we to solve this problem? I don't know how far we want to say the uh, the money part has been solved, the funding part, but it's it's definitely it's it's a huge boost. It's a big start for a lot of these areas where it hasn't really been that economical to build these things out, or the internet service that does exist there is uh, you know, about five ten years behind the rest of the state. But what we're looking at here, according to the Pennsylvania Broadband Development Authority's meeting this week, we could have workforce shortages or an issue with labor here. Part of this is not necessarily unique to Pennsylvania. Um, This is sort of the consequence of nationally the federal government sending out about $45 billion for broadband build-outs that will be spent out over the next five years. What happens with that is it puts a lot of pressure on every state to find workers who are qualified enough to build this stuff out. So... The Broadband Development Authority hired out a consultant, uh, Michael Baker International, to essentially write up the five-year plan, the report, give the data here for uh, what we're looking at. And based on some updated FCC maps and data, we're looking at about 333,000 unserved and underserved locations across the Commonwealth. I mean, that can be businesses, that can be homes, location is fairly broad. But looking at this and looking at what they'll have to build out over the next five years, the consultant is estimating of the high priority occupations will need about 2,300 mainline splicing crews, another 450 buried crews, 300 aerial crews, and 55 uh, splicing crews for last mile connections. So that comes into anywhere from about six to 7,000, give or take, personnel who uh, need to basically get together to build out this broadband network. And not only is Pennsylvania, you know, we've been kind of middling, either struggling to keep our population or seeing some population declines, especially in these underserved areas. There's a lot of demand for that labor. That's going to drive up the price for it. And it's also going to drive up just the difficulty of actually pulling everyone together to do this. So why don't you talk to us, too, a little bit about why this broadband expansion is just so important in Pennsylvania? You've done a lot of great reporting on this issue because, as we mentioned, it's been ongoing for years and has really, in the eyes of many, held Pennsylvania back in so many ways. So what are the consequences of these regions not having broadband? Yeah, I mean, whenever you go out into rural Pennsylvania, if you go to community meetings about this or if you talk to county officials, there's a couple of different levels here. There's the economic problem of you know, people can't work remotely. Uh, businesses can't necessarily expand easily. Um, so there's that economic argument of not having these connections really slows things down. Um, in the Broadband Development Authority meeting uh, yesterday, the presentation about you know this need for the labor force and everything else, some of the feedback that they've gotten from these community roundtables, conversations, person who owned a rural business, and they said that they essentially they get online at 4 a.m. to place their shipping orders because the internet speed is so slow that doing it at any other time of the day will not work. Uh, so there's the economic issue. There's also just generally the uh, medical problem of, you know, hospitals can't necessarily connect or use any sort of uh, telehealth or telemedicine. People cannot necessarily uh, get in touch with their doctors. In a lot of places, you even have basic phone services an issue. So there's, especially in rural Pennsylvania, which tends to have an older population than the suburbs or the cities, that's a major concern. There's also simply this basic what the government does and how the government can provide a services issue, where in some places you have uh, police stations that will be out of touch. You'll have 911 services that can't actually connect to the people who need help. And, you know, that also boils down to, you know, property deed changes, um, the, the basic workings of governments uh, making businesses run, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot of issues that come up. And this isn't even touching issues with schools not being able to be connected or kids not being able to submit homework. Um, you know, there's a lot of different facets of this. And so the idea of expanding broadband out, similar to rural electrification in the 1930s of faster inter- internet speeds and getting people connected into broadband 
has a variety of benefits and uh, simply basic uh, making, you know, making the Commonwealth run, whether we're talking businesses, whether we're talking healthcare, whether we're talking government providing the services for the people. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Anthony Hennon, this is Kristen Smith. Please subscribe and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.